my speech is social environment переживание and child development and of course I hope many of you are interested most of all about переживание and I will start with that what actually переживание is if we look not from Vygotskian perspective but from just real life this is about child's reactions or child's responses to everything we do with the child uh, my area is early childhood I work with children I study children's development that's why my example is from this every time we come to the child bringing a new toy for the child or smiling to the child we are expecting something like this we are expecting the child will react positively why because we are uh, we are looking for reflection from the child and what strong metaphor stands behind that is a metaphor metaphor of a mirror and the principle of reflection which which is the main principle in psychology reflection reflexes stimulus response internal external these are things about what psychology is about but what happens really in real life we can see something very different the reactions of children might be very different scaring interest ignorance uh, crying screaming what's what's then this is what we see and here we are dealing with a different principle which is called the principle of refraction as if there is something between us and the child our stimulus goes and being refracted changing the direction and my preferable metaphor for this is that I think you all recognize this this is what really happens and this is what Pirijavani is about almost 10 years ago in a fa fantastic paper of Peter Smagorinsky Peter said that Pirijavani is more a tantalizing notion than a concept with clear meaning look it was said almost 10 years ago and since that year 2011 a lot of interesting papers and books were published about Peri Giovanni I want to show you something this is a uh, they are not all of them but this is a quite impressive list of of research and publications both empirical theoretical about Peri Giovanni and I also did something in this field and this is a kind of uh, how to say list of my modest and very humble contribution to this field and what I'm going to present today will is mostly based on this uh, publication of mine I can call it a dialogue with Vygotsky <clears throat> and now it's time to introduce the main person the main <laughs> presenter of today I'm absolutely sure you recognize this gentleman so for me I also had and I still have two important questions in mind the first is what are the methodological challenges related to the concept of Perijivani and how can we use Perijivani as a theoretical concept uh, in our research how can I apply to my research with children or with adults? These are two important questions. And uh, I just want to share with you, to present to you uh, some ideas 
which for me were very important and uh, which I used in my research. So this is a very interesting book. This is the book published in 1931 called in Russian Psychologiczki Slavari, which means the Psychological Dictionary. So you see the year of publication is 1931, but uh, the dictionary was written in 1927 two years after psychology of art and we can and there is a there is a because it's a dictionary there is a word the term perezhevania here you see here in russian perezhevania so uh, mm, i'm afraid not everybody here can read russian that's why i made a translation in English, I'm sorry I couldn't make a translation to Portuguese, but I hope our fantastic translator Carolina Carol will make a translation. So, how Vygotsky defines Pirijivania? You see, this is very simple definition that Pirijivania is a common name for any kind of direct psychological experience which means that everything we experience psychologically is perijivania perception is perijivania memory is perijivania representations are perijivania and even thinking is perijivania so this is very umbrella this is very common traditional name and by the way this term perijivania was very widely in use in world psychology because he didn't introduce something new here. And this is the book I wanted I wanted to present to you because my presentation will be mostly based on this on this book, uh, just recently translated, volume one, pedagogical works. Uh, I know you have a Portuguese translation of that, so therefore we can understand each other. And unfortunately, I'm not going to talk about how Pirijivania is presented in psychology of art, because Priscilla will do this presentation. I will focus more on later works of Vygotsky, pedagogical works of Vygotsky, how the concept of Pirijivania was improved in cultural historical theory. Coming back to the question, what is Pirijivania? From this definition, it's very clear that Vygotsky make a very important distinction, distinction between Pirijivania as something which really exists. We can see Pirijivania on of children. We can feel Pirijivania our own Pirijivania. This is a kind of phenomenon, very complex phenomenon, but observable phenomenon. That's my PhD students say it's P1. It's like something we can see and absorb and record. And the second, Pirijivania as a theoretical concept, as an abstraction. And this is very important distinction Vygotsky did and I think it's very important for us to understand what's the difference between P1 and P2, because P1 is Pirijivania, yes, and P2 is also Pirijivania. But is there any difference between P1 and P2? Yes, it is. So let's start doing step by step, coming gradually from P1, then P2. If at the end of my lecture, everybody will have a little bit of clear distinction between P1 and P2, it will be absolutely fantastic result of our conversation. And I will start with P1. Perejivania is empirically existing phenomenon in the form of feelings, emotions, whatever. And look at this picture. 
these are the students they just passed the exam and the exam results are in front of them it seems that they all felt failed the, the exam but you can see how differently they react on this girl is nearly crying the next boy is looking uh, surprised the third boy is looking very suspicious as if he's thinking about a plan and the last one with the sunglasses he is just puzzling what how you see something happened the real event in their life and how they react to the same event but look how differently they all react not only emotionally but also personally and I will discuss it a little bit later now we are coming to the definition this is a definition of Vygotsky Perizhivani is a phenomenon as a phenomenon P1 is how the child or adult is aware of how the child interprets and effectively relates to a certain event the first point here is our affective relation to certain event. Something should happen to generate our perishivania. If nothing happens, there is no perishivania. But when something happens, we begin to perceive, we begin to analyze, we begin to interpret and emotionally relate to this event this is what p1 is you might say okay that's clear what's the difference then between perishivani and emotional reactions because these are emotions why we need the word perishivani why not we just saying emotional reaction or emotional response or emotional experience and the answer is that what might look as a high mountain of emotions, what we can read from the faces of people, is much more. It looks like this. Because behind the face, behind the surface, Perejivania is a complex nexus of different psychological processes. Perejivania is not only emotion. Perejivania is how we are becoming aware of, how we interpret, how we understand, and how we react. So, which means that Perejivania is internal internal attitude of a child or of an adult as a person to one or another moment of reality unfortunately this was translated in english as external relation but in fact in russian text vygotsky speaks about perishivani as an internal attitude integral internal attitude to something what happens with us so, Perejivani P1 is a complex nexus of different processes, different personal characteristics of the child or adult, which includes components of representations, understanding, subjective interpretations, and awareness of individual in relation to certain event in her social environment. You can see emotions here, yes, but we can see the imagine, imagination because the girl imagines what happens when she comes back home and says to mom, oh, mom, I failed the exam. 
she is imagining this situation and she is afraid. The boy from the left, third from the left, is thinking about something, just thinking about what to do. You see, emotion goes together with imagination, emotion goes together with memory, emotion goes together here with thinking. Now, as a result, we see much deeper we can understand the situation much deeper than just reading the emotions from the faces this is what Pirjivani is about so p1 is not just emotional reaction p1 is a very complex and uh, very complex phenomenon which includes emotions perceptions interpretations memory will imagination thinking and every time they are in very in very specific subjective configuration if we use the terminology of fernando gonzalez ray if you like so this is a complex phenomenon but then the question is how we can study this complex phenomenon in our experiments with children how we can apply this to understand uh, the uh, process of development of children. I can give you an example. And this is example from my research. The example is very short. It was an excursion of group of children from kindergarten to the church, to the local church. The, the, te the teacher and children came to the bus and they came to the church with the bus and then they leave the bus they visit the church and then they return back uh, to school but when we ask children to make a picture a story a story about i went to the church on the bus you see the picture what is here definitely the girl made a picture of a church because for her that was the most important moment of this whole ex excursion the church but look what one of the boys did what is this this is the bus for boy the most important moment event was not the church was the bus when we, they all together were in the bus going to the church and back you see the same event in children's lives was refracted refracted differently this is how Pirijewani works this is what remains in the child's memory church or the bus how can i use this in my research there is a, there are two simple ways the first is it gives me a researcher it gives me as a researcher an opportunity to clarify how one and the same event was perceived interpreted and understood differently by different children. So, using this approach of studying Pirijuania, I can understand better which components of social environment and how they were refracted through the child's perjuvania and which components of social environment were not refracted in child's perjuvania i can study social environment not from my perspective as an adult but from the child's perspective i can see the social environment by child's eyes
for me as a teacher is very important because I can provide the absolutely fantastic uh, social environment for the child. But from the point of view of the child, there are only some components, some parts of the social environment which are refracted. So playing with that, experimenting with that, I can then gradually select those components of the environment which will really affect the child. So this is the point number one. Point number two is that I can understand child more than before. Because in Perijivania, what happens is there are some personal characteristics of the child are just becoming crystallized, becoming mobilized, mobilized. So, uh, to make it clear and understandable for everybody, the question is why the girl was focusing on the church? Why the boy was focusing on the bus? For, for the girl, that was the first time she visited church. That's why she was very much interested to the church. That's why her experience was full of church experience that was the central for her but why the bus for the boy so this boy from was from very rich family and every morning the driver brings the boy to the school with the car and this boy wanted wanted to, to go somewhere with the bus, as many other people do. It was the first time in his life when he was in a bus together with his friends from the school. That's why. That's why this reflected. You see, we can, we can get much more knowledge about the characteristics of children on even social economical status. This is, uh, this is important. So, and conclusions Devigotsky is doing is that it is always necessary to approach environment, not with the absolute yardstick, but relative first. So, and therefore environment through Pirijivania, environment in child's Pirijivania cannot be considered as absolutely external or absolutely internal. There is no border between external and internal. This is a process of how external becomes internal, how internal becomes in external. Principle of relativity, if you like. Okay, so coming back, Pejuania P1. I think I have finished with P1. I still have 15 minutes to speak about Perejivania as P2, Perejivania as a concept. And my dialogue with Vygotsky is about this, not about P1, but mostly about P2. This is the area of my specific interest. Why? Because I want, I really want to know what is the place of this concept, theoretical concept of Perejivania in cultural historical theory. What is this concept about and how can I use this concept for my research? And Vygotsky gives the answer. You see? Here, Vygotsky doesn't say anything about Perijivani as a phenomenon of how the child interprets and so on. He says here, Perijivani is a concept. And this concept allows us to study the role and influence of environment not on the child, but the role and influence of environment on the psychological development of the child. 
There are things which influence us, but not everything which influences us influences our development. That's why the concept of Perijivani is so important. Because if, as a researcher, I want to understand how different events, social situations, might affect the child, it's one story. But if my task is to understand how they affect the child development, it is a different story. This is my, the area of my specific interest. And here we are coming back to my first slide when Vygotsky introduces the new principle, the new fundamental principle for psychology, the principle of refraction. I can put it, I can put it even stronger. Reflection is the physiological principle. Because our reflexes are based on the principle of reflection. But refraction is the principle of psychology. Psychology starts together with our ability to refract social environment factors. Not just reflect, but refract. To interpret them the way our subjective way so now i want to to make a little bit of interruption and i want to show you a couple of pictures and my question is um, which of presented is about p2 p2 is the concept theoretical concept not p1 I don't know how we can manage this, but I will just show you several pictures and you give me the answer. Which of these is about P2? Just make it as a self-test. Or we can share later. This one, this is a refraction. This is also a refraction. This is a refraction. This is also a refraction, and that one. So, what do you think about this? Is this pictures about P2? And the answer is none of this is P2. Why? Because these all are examples of physically existing refractions. But P2 is not about refraction, refractions as a phenomenon. This is a phenomenon. P2 is about theoretical concept which has no phenomenology. Vygotsky gives us a very interesting uh, metaphor that Perejivani uh, is a sort of prism which defines the role and influence of the environment on, on the development of the child, on the child's character, on the child's psychological development. So, but this is very abstract, this is very general. What does it actually mean? And again, we can learn from Vygotsky how we can use the concept of Perejivania for, as a tool for analysis of the real situation. And Vygotsky gives us an example of how the concept of Perejivania might be used as an analytical tool. And of course, everybody knows these examples, but I just want to highlight again. So this famous example with three children, and Vygotsky says that there are three children and external environment of this family, uh, mom, mother and three children is identical, is absolutely the same. Mom is alcoholic mom, she's dangerous, she drinks, 
and she is very aggressive to children and the situation is not good and Vygotsky does not give a lot of details about he only says that the external environment of this family has been identical for all three children but because of their age because of their psychological uh, organization because of their psychological qualities and traits three people reacted in to the same situation in different ways the first child reacts with the neurotic symptoms and raises stammer silent losing voice so he is reacting with their symptoms of defense and neurotism okay second child demonstrates a conflict situation on one hand he he loves her mom his mom on the other hand he is afraid so it's a sharp conflict sharp contradiction of the form of positive and negative relation to the mother this is absolutely not normal this is disrupted development but this is a kind of conflict and you see two attitudes positive and negative are clashing together which is quite stressful for the child so oh, oh yeah sorry <laughs> okay so and uh, the, the third and the eldest child reacts in a very specific way He's, he begins to take care about other children. He begins to take care about the mom. He feels himself as the eldest person in the, in the family. He is taking care of children. He is trying to protect mom and to protect their, their sisters and brothers. You see, in the same situation, three different uh types of reactions three different types of attitude and what and what vygotsky makes as a conclusion is what determines the fact that the same environmental conditions have three different effects effects on three different children it is due to the fact that the attitude of each child to event is different depending on three different perijivania of one and the same situation the impact on the situation has upon their development turns out to be different perijivania is a key to understand why the same situation brings so different pictures of development how the same situation affects the development of children differently. So three children had the same social situation, but they had three different social situations of <coughs> development. And I would like to, I'm coming to the end. I have still five minutes. So and i just want to introduce this general model which i have developed from uh, vygotsky's analysis of these three children you see these three children are in a big in a big field of social environment social environment is not only family is not only mom they are uh, living social environment is very wide but within this social environment something happens this is a green field which is called social situation social situation is the situation three children are actively involved social situation is a kind of event or series of events this is this is not 
only social environment but this is a social situation within social environment and being in the same social situation children reflect the same situation in different ways this is prism one this is prism two prism three and because the refraction was different because the refractions of the same situations were different makes three different social situations of development the same social situation was not the same for every child for every child it was a specific social situation of development and because of this the children developmental outcomes were different development outcome one neurotic reaction development outcome two conflict development outcome three taking care changing the role in the family so this is a general model which helps us to separate three things social environment as something the child is in objectively and independently from the child existing context social situation a part of the social environment the real event which happens in child life the situation the child is participating the child is involved as a participant and social situation of development which becomes possible because of children differently reflect the same social situation you see this is a kind of way of of distinguishing between social environment social situation and social situation of development and that's why i call it three focus of analysis it it helps me a researcher when i analyze my data to see aha this is a social environment this is social situation and these are social situations of development it gives me instruments to understand how different children reflecting the same social situation differently and how they children how they make social situations of development from the social situation i create for them and my final slide is coming back to vygotsky of course Vygotsky gives us a very interesting example. It's a kind of dramatic situation. It's a conflict situation. It's a situation which we can call dramatic perijivania. And that's why I would love to introduce the concept I'm developing now is the concept of dramatic perijivania. So dramatic perijivania is an individual reflection of us of some dramatic events, social dramatic events, collisions, reflected through the magic perijuania might become a micro social situations of development and they might produce the qualitative changes turning points in child's development and this gives me a lot of interesting uh, opportunities to study how the child is coming from series of micro social situations of development in, in his real life and how these micro social situations of development bring changes to the child's developmental trajectory this is the project i'm doing now unfortunately i have no time to share this but i just wanted to introduce so that through drama of life through the collision the contradiction we experience dramatic perijuania which might bring qualitative changes to all our system of higher psychological functions like thinking memory will or imagination and this might be the turning point for our developmental trajectory, not only children, but also adults. And thank you very much, Abrigada, for listening and for the opportunity for me to talk to you. And just uh, some links to my personal sites. And if you want to know more, just please contact me. So I think my time is over. Thank you very much.
questions which I want to answer because of time and because of, you know, we don't need to be cruel to the participants. The first is about the distinction between P, P1 and P2. So I think it's not as clear. So P1 is a perizuvania which we can absorb. We can absorb. We can read from from behavior of the child. We can read from their faces. But we, we, we can make a mistake. We can make a mistake saying that what we can see in child on child's faces is what really happens with the child because we can see only top tip of the iceberg the emotional reactions but Vygotsky gives us a lesson he says that hey people behind that tip of the iceberg there is much more hidden and all complex of child's uh, personality or subjective configuration if you are using Fernando Storm or subjectivity is because we can see emotions but behind that what is in action is child's perception child's imagination child's memory child's thinking but we cannot see these components we can only see emotional side so, and the concept of the Perigiovanni P1 gives us, gives us a very good key not to reduce our studies only to absor absorb and analyze child's emotional reactions because there is much more there, okay? And to open this much more is Perigiovanni P1. That's important. So we can study Perigiovanni as P1, but having in mind that Perigiovanni is not emotional experience only. It includes elements of imagination, perception, will, thinking, memory. Okay? Complexity. So we are not looking at the child as only emotional reactor. We are looking at the child as a human, human complex. Okay, this is about P1. Then P2 is a simple, not it's a, just a poor theoretical concept. P2 does not exist. We cannot absorb P2. It's a theoretical concept which Vygotsky created as a theoretical tool. It helps us to understand the dialectics the dialectics of child development so is a is a concept we can use to understand the role of environment in child's development okay so there are things which might influence us but not everything which influences us influences our development my class today and uh my my class my lecture today maybe had an influence on you but i'm not sure it influenced your development i'm not sure that after my lecture you begin to think differently about stuff but what i'm sure about is that priscilla's lecture not only did influence us it did change our way of thinking so that's why that's why there are two different. So this is the point, P1. And then the question is, this next, that my second question was, uh, uh, and that's why it's so important to separate P1 and P2. This is why it's so important. When we read Vygotsky's text and when we see the word Perigivania in the text, we have to ask the question, op Perigivania. Is Vygotsky speaking about P1 here or he is speaking about P2? here. Sometimes Vygotsky speaks about Perigiovanni as P1, sometimes he speaks about Perigiovanni as P2. So having this map in mind, we can make a clear distinction first. So the second question is the relation about Perigiovanni and drama. That was a question from somebody. So <clears throat> the lesson from Vygotsky that Vygotsky left us researchers is very, very clear. 
concepts do not exist in isolation. Scientific concepts only work as a system of concepts. System of concepts, several concepts. Which means that if we take one concept as our analytical tool, it is never enough. We have to take several concepts, which create a sort of complexity, the framework. And Vygotsky gives us an, an example that to understand Pereživanie, we have to use Pereživanie together with two other concepts. Social situation of development and drama. So, because Pereživanie only happens when there is a certain event and this event has a dramatic moment only when when we have a dramatic event in a social situation of development we have a perijuania three on the other hand we will never understand what is social situation of development if we do not take this together with perijuania because Vygotsky says that Pirijivani of the child is what makes, what creates a social situation of development. And finally, we cannot understand the concept of drama without taking it together with Pirijivani and social situation of development. This is, a, this is a triangle, a triad. Social situation of development, drama, and Pirijivani. This is a minimal theoretical framework to analyze all these three things. We cannot just take Pirijivani. No, we cannot just take social situation of development because if you take only one component, we destroy the whole system of concepts. We have to take a system of concepts. Therefore, dramatic char character of, of development dialectics of development where the contradiction is the moving force of development as we know from dialectics is the mo one of the most important things and social situation of development is a component of this dialectics of development and perijivani is also a component of a dialectics of development if i as a researcher i want to understand the dialectics of development of the child if I want to go as deep as possible in my analysis, I have to, I should, I have no choice. I have to take three concepts together. Pirijivania, social situation of development and drama. This is a conceptual framework. Of course, today, me and Priscilla, we mostly were focused on Pirijivania, mostly. But even though Priscilla could not avoid mentioning of, about social situation of development, arts, social nature of Pirijivani. Even me, I could not avoid mentioning social situation of development and drama because logically these three concepts are going together. So that's my answer to the question of, of the relations between Pirijivani and drama. Pirijivani and drama and social situation of development is a minimum triangle for analysis. Uh, sorry, I didn't want to be too theoretical today, but uh, for me, it's very important to understand cultural historical theory as a theory, okay? Not as a list of ideas like ZPD, Pirijivani and something. So it's a system of concepts system of not the list of concepts but the system of concepts and my task is to understand what is the place of the concept of perijivani in this system of concepts and that's why my presentation was maybe too theoretical sorry for that okay
So, I could think that this is a methodological, theoretical concept in the sense that it can be tough mm -hmm. as a phenomenon and at the same time a method for compression mm. the phenomenon. Not at the same time, I should say. Uh, we can study Pirijewani P1 by observing child's behavior observing child's emotions in different situations and asking them to make drawings as I presented. So this is all about P1 and we do not need any th theoretical analysis here. We are observing P1 in order to understand what are the aspects of the child activated, what are the components of environment involved. So this might be very interesting empirical research, but we, we will never know how this environment will affect child's development. In my pictures of church and the bus, church and the bus, we can see that church affected the girl, bus affected the boy. But we do not, do not know how this affected their development. Are there any developmental changes in this girl or in this boy after that? No way. No way. And this, that was no way for Vygotsky. He said that this, this is not enough. Because if you want to understand the development, we have to not to use P1, but we have to use P2. We have to apply the theoretical framework to looking on children's development in dramatic situations, dramatic collisions. Where, where they might happen that the child will change the development. So this is the difference. P1 is poor empirical, very interesting to study. No problem with that, but limited. You, you, could, you can analyze the child's emotional reactions all day, three days, three years, with no idea how, how the child really develops. But if you apply P2, as a concept you have a chance to understand the role and the place of environment and influence of environment on the child's development depends on your task if your research question is just to make an analysis of child's perijewania no problem but if your research question is to understand the child's development and analyze child's perijewania in relation to child's development, you have to use P2. And Vygotsky's example with three children is an example how Vygotsky used the concept of Perijivania to, to understand why in the same situation three different children had three different outcomes. We can learn from Vygotsky because all children had Pirijewani about it. All three children had Pirijewani about it. This is what is common. But because of their individual personal psychological characteristics, they had different Pirijewani of, of the same situation. And this explains why they had different reactions. So, this is the transition from empirical, uh, descriptive analysis to developmental, explanatory analysis. By using P2, we can explain why these three children reacted so, so differently. And main question in the science is not the question how, but the question why. And you remember Vygotsky many times said that psychology should stop using descriptive methods. Psychology should find explanatory methods, the tools to explain things rather than to describe. Sorry, I'm, I'm 
coming too too far too far away but i hope i did answer the question <laughs> no distinction exists but this is not distinction between two things we can absorb this and we can absorb that no p1 is what we can absorb p2 is what we cannot absorb look p2 is a theoretical concept abstract it's like a commodity in marx we cannot absorb the commodity we can only absorb the real products but the commodity is the is the is the abstraction abstract abstract concept so this is the difference okay yeah i don't know how to ex explain <laughs> dialectical reasoning requires concepts to understand dialectics of development of the child requires special concepts which reflect the development of the child so they both require each other dialectical thinking requires concepts concepts require dialectical thinking so good very good point thank you огромное спасибо 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 спасибо